Okay, this first ditto is Pinocchio, which is the first day of our pre-calculus unit. So the first questions are asking you to find limits. All of these are limits. Remember, limits are always y values. So we're looking for the y values at either positive or negative infinity on this ditto. So we have to picture what's happening on this graph as you go to the right forever or as you go to the left forever. Now I want you to notice on the first three problems here, they are all parabolas. They're all right side up parabolas because it's not negative x squared. So this plus 3, for example, on number 2 is just shifting the parabola up 3. This plus 4 and this minus 5 right here cause the parabola to move left or right and up or down, uh, which doesn't change the shape of the graph. So knowing that these are just right side up parabolas, we should be able to do the limits for them fairly quickly. What y value is this graph approaching as you go to the right forever? Since it's headed up forever, the answer is just infinity. This parabola is also headed up as you go to the right, so it's also infinity. And same thing with number three, this parabola. So what's important to know right now is the shape of the graph comes from this guy right here. That guy right there is called the dominant term. The dominant term has the largest exponent. The other stuff here in this equation don't change the shape of the graph. They just move it left and right and up and down. If we move on to the next one here, this is x cubed. Now, you had x cubed from Algebra 2, so you may recall the shape of that. Looks something like that, terribly drawn. So as you go to the right forever, you can see that it's headed up, and headed up means we've got an infinity answer for y. 5 and 6 are all forms of a cubic graph. Uh, this one is simply just moved down 7, but as you go to the right, it's still headed up, so that's going to be positive infinity. On number 6, x cubed is your largest exponent. That controls the shape of this graph, which means this graph is going to exit to the right, headed up, so it's still going to be infinity. This stuff here doesn't change the ultimate shape of the graph at the infinities. So this is still going to be positive infinity and we don't even have to worry about this stuff. Now eventually we're going to get to equations where we don't know the shapes of them. We don't know that it, it looks like a cubed graph. So uh, one method besides using our calculator and taking a look at the graph which can be time consuming is to plug in large numbers for x. You know we're supposed to plug in infinity so if you were to plug in a thousand or ten thousand or a million and just kind of calculate where, where that answer is getting closer to, you can kind of predict that it's headed up forever or, or something else. So I'm going to start doing that here pretty soon. Um, on number 7, we've got a parabola again, but this says find the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Negative infinity is to the left forever, um, but we know that a parabola goes up left and right, so this is still positive infinity. Now what I was talking about earlier you can take an, a, a number, say negative a million, and plug it in for x. And a negative million squared is a very, very large positive number, which would conclude that this graph is headed up, and up means positive infinity. Here's another parabola that's moved up 3, but as you go to the left forever, it's still headed up, so that's a positive infinity, as is number 9. For the cube graph at negative infinity, uh, I've drawn it right here, x cubed. You can see that as you go to the left, the graph is headed down, so this one's going to be negative infinity. However, if you didn't know what the graph looked like, you could plug in an, a very large negative number in for x, say a negative a million, and you cube it, and any negative number that is cubed will still be negative. It's just going to be a huge negative, and that's why it's negative infinity, because it's headed down. So this row is also negative infinities, because the up or down shifts don't change where the graph is headed as you go left or right. Now number 13 is an equation 1 over x, a hyperbola graph you had from Algebra 2. If I sketched it really fast, some of you might recall that it kinda looks like this. Yikes. As x approaches infinity, as you go to the right forever, you can see this thing leveling off right on top of the x-axis. And because it's leveling off right there, the y values are approaching zero. It's getting really, really close to the x-axis. It doesn't ever get there, but that doesn't matter. One way to do it, if you didn't remember what this graph looked like, would be to plug in a million right there. 
Well, one divided by a million is 0 0.000001, which is very, very small, really close to zero. So that's why our limit is zero, because it's approaching it. It's getting really, really close to zero. If you were to plug a million into this equation, because we don't know what this graph necessarily looks like, one divided by a million squared is extremely small. It's even smaller than the previous one, so it's getting really, really close to zero, faster than the one we just did, but it's still approaching zero. On 15, if you were to plug in a million here, a thousand divided by a million squared is really, really close to zero. Also keep in mind this, if you're ever confused, if this number here is really large, and you're like, oh, I, I don't know if it's approaching zero. Keep in mind, I'm plugging in a million right here just to give you an example, but we're supposed to go to infinity. And a million is a long ways away from infinity. So picture yourself putting in a billion and a trillion and a quadrillion, etc. This number is just going to get enormous. And since that guy's staying put at a thousand, this fraction is getting closer to zero. So what's important to, to know from these problems is this. If you're doing limits at the infinities, whether it's positive or negative, and the denominator is going to get big, 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 faster than that numerator is, then that fraction is getting closer to zero. So for example, I'm going to write this one right here. You don't see it. If I wrote something like x plus 1 over x squared, and we were trying to find the limit as x approaches infinity. Well, if you put a million there, you'd have a million and one. Here, you would have a million squared, which is quite a bit bigger than this guy. So if I put a billion there and a billion there, I'd have a billion and one over a billion squared. And again, this guy's quite a bit bigger. What's going to happen and what you should notice is this guy's getting faster, bigger, uh, faster than this guy is. This guy is getting bigger, faster than this guy. And when the denominator gets bigger, faster than the numerator is, then that fraction's getting closer to zero. And that works for positive or negative infinities. On this one here, we're supposed to approach negative infinity. Well, if you were to think of it as plugging in negative a million into here, you'd have 1 divided by negative a million, which is negative 0 0.00001, which is getting closer to 0. It's just coming from the negatives. That just means if you look from our graph, it's approaching 0, but it's coming from underneath the x-axis from the negative y values, but it's still approaching 0. So all of these are zero because the denominator is getting bigger faster than the numerator. And it doesn't matter if it's getting bigger negative or bigger positive. It's just uh, increasing from zero. If you look at 19 now, uh, if you were to stick in a million there, for example, since we're, or pardon me, negative a million, one divided by a negative a million is exactly what we just did on 16. That fraction's getting really, really close to zero. But now, since that guy's getting really, really close to zero and that six isn't changing, it's basically zero plus six, which is six. If that's confusing to you, I'll just show you what just happened. We took one over x, which was this graph here, and we moved it up six, which would be rough sketch, something like that, where this right here is six. So now this graph, as you go to negative infinity, is approaching six rather than zero. Here, this fraction is getting really, really, really close to zero as you go to negative infinity. So I'm going to put goes to zero. Zero minus eight is negative eight. And the next one, uh, if you plug in negative uh, a million here, you get a fraction that's getting really close to zero. This fraction is getting closer to zero. They get close to zero at different rates, but it doesn't matter. So they approach zero. You'd have zero plus zero plus five is five. If you look at 22, if you plug in a million here, 2 divided by a million squared is basically 0. You plug in a million here at the same time, you get 3 million. So now we have 0 plus 3 million. Well, that's getting huge. Now if you were to stick in a billion, for example, you'd have a 0 plus 3 billion. So this is getting huge. This is controlling the problem. It's the dominant term. We have positive infinity here. All right, I think I'm out of time. I'm going to go to video number two. I'm going to stop here and continue from where we left off. So go watch video number two now for the rest of Pinocchio.